Okay, so in this video, we're going to talk about different forms of evolution and how that happens. So there's two types of evolution that you can have. You can have convergent evolution and divergent evolution. So let's just look at those first two words because we know what evolution means already. So when two things converge, they're far away and they're coming closer together, right? And when two things diverge, they are close together and now they're moving apart, right? So that's the difference between the two. So convergent evolution is going to be where you have two sets of organisms that are so different and then all of a sudden they randomly evolve to have like a similar feature that almost seems like they're becoming more similar all of a sudden. Okay, divergent evolution would be if you have um, a type of organism and all of a sudden it has two populations and they kind of start branching off and becoming more different from one another. So convergent is almost like they're becoming more similar to one another and divergent evolution is where they're becoming a little bit more different from one another. And so on my PowerPoint I've actually got some pictures to kind of show you what I'm talking about. So this would be an example of convergent evolution. What thing do you see that these two have in common? Hopefully, you'll notice that they both have wings, right? But if you look at the structure of the wings, they're different, right? So wings are both used in these instances to fly, but these guys are going to have bones that are uh, wings that are made of bones, they're going to have feathers on them, and these insects are going to have an exoskeleton, and so their wings are made of chitin, completely different, right? But kind of random that they both evolved to fly, so it's almost like they're becoming similar because they both can fly, right? Uh, whereas if we look at divergent evolution, once again we have the example of having wings, but if you look at these two, the structure of these are actually quite similar. They both have bones on the inside, right, and they're both made of calcium carbonate. So um, it's pretty likely that these two evolved from a similar species and then kind of diverged from there, right? So that's how you're going to think about convergent versus divergent evolution. Okay, um, so one thing that we should talk about is the fact that um, with the theory of evolution and natural selection, there is also a field called natural theology. Um, and this is going to be a field where people have said, well, I don't want to give up religion, but I don't want to give up science. Because as I'm sure you know, science and religion like to butt heads a lot. So natural theology is kind of a way that people have found to kind of put stuff together. So to give you like a Christian example, it would be how um, in the beginning they say that there was a... Um, uh, that God said, let there be light, and some people think that that coincides with the Big Bang. So it's people that believe in evolution, but just with a religious twist, right, is kind of how you can think of it. So obviously there are polar ends of this spectrum. There's a ton of stuff in between. We're going to just talk about evolution on the science side, but if we ever have time, we will, we will totally debate it and talk about it. Um, but as far as this goes, we're going to stay in that um, situation. Okay. So, moving on. I'm sorry, I just lost my place. Okay, so let's talk about how they know that evolution has occurred. Um, back in the day, they used to use fossil evidence. So paleontology is going to be the study of fossils, and fossils are just going to be impressions or remnants of organisms from the past preserved in rock. So the type of rock that you're going to find fossils in is going to be sedimentary rock, which is going to be like sandstone and that kind of stuff. And basically it's going to be um, composed of layers. So if you look here at this next slide, there we go, um, you can see that these rocks have layers in them, right? Um, and here's a cartoony version of that. So you've got this deposited sediment, it's going to keep getting one layer on the other and eventually it's going to compress into rock. Now if we found a fossil down here and we found a fossil up here, we could probably assume that the one down below, the one down here, is probably older than the one at the top, right? Because the one at the top was the most recent layer that was put on there. If you're doing that, if you're saying that, that's going to be something called relative dating. So you haven't figured out how old either of these are, but you do know that this fossil is older, I'm sorry, this fossil is older than this one because it was found deeper. Okay, so relative dating is going to be um, what we call that. Now, there are issues with that. Um, relative dating, first of all, is cheap. It's easy to do. You don't really need any major equipment to do it. However, um, think about plate tectonics. What if plate tectonics had happened and some sort of geo geologic event had flipped that over? Now we're completely wrong, right? Um, the other thing is there's no real accuracy. You're not coming up with how old something is. You just know that it's older than something else, right? 
So the other type of dating that we can do is called absolute dating. And absolute dating is going to be using rates of radioactive decay to help us date a rock. So um, a lot of um, scientists will use carbon-14, right? And so you can actually look at different isotopes of carbon that's in a fossil, and you can say, okay, there's this much of this isotope and there's this much of this one. That means this rock must be this old because they know how long it takes for one isotope to turn into another. So it's a lot more accurate. However, it's very expensive and you need major equipment to do it. So if you're just going out to do, you know, like a fun trip, you're probably going to end up doing relative dating. But if you get a nice grant that can fund you, maybe you'll do some absolute dating. That's how you can think of it. Um, okay, this last little part we'll do in the next video. And this is just talking about other fields of biology that we can use to kind of figure out common ancestry.